Juan Ogulman was a Mexican architect, muralist, socialist, and painter of Irish descent born in Guayacan, Mexico. Ogulman was raised by a strict disciplinarian father who used corporal punishment for even the smallest of infractions. Even though his father wasn't the best of people, Ogulman did learn a lot from him. His father was the first one to introduce him to the arts and the first one Ogurman learned from. Ogurman learned from his father by watching him paint and asking for guidance. Despite his father being his first teacher, he credited others with being his teacher out of resentment for his father. Some of the people Ogurman credited with being his teacher are Antonio Ruiz, a neighbor of his who was a professional artist, Ramon Alba Guardarama, an assistant of Diego Rivera, and none other than Diego Rivera himself. Ogurman idolized Rivera and referred to him as his Gran Maestro. Juan Ogurman made many artworks in his time, such as the murals in the National Autonomous University of Mexico Central Library and in Pátzcuaro, Michoacán, and this one named Monuments of Funebre del Capitalismo. But what is a mural supposed to be about or represent? Well, like any other form of art, a mural can be about anything at all. However, the big three muralists, Diego Rivera, Jose Orozco, and David Siqueiros used murals to portray Mexican culture and how Mexico was forming a new national identity after the Civil War. I believe this greatly affected Ogreman's art, especially because he idolized Rivera. In his artworks, you can see how he portrays Mexico as a nation and its people along with his own views of things. In this particular artwork, we can see Ogreman's own views on reality and capitalism. You can see what seems to be a pyramid-like figure towards the top are industries and what may be a government building. While on the bottom is how Mexico originally began, you can see a small pueblo and a farmland. Furthermore, you can see how there is pollution and people falling around the figure. This shows capitalism in a negative way and shows the viewers Ogorman is a socialist who disagrees with capitalism. Juan Ogulman, the Tao de la Independencia, 1960-1961, mural, 4.40 meters by 15.69 meters. It can be found in the Museo Nacional de la Historia Castillo de Chapultepec, Mexico. Now then, Mexico was in a very complicated state during the early and mid 20th century. During this time, two major events took place. The Mexican Revolution, which took place from 1910 to 1920, and in the 60s to 70s, Mexico had a dirty war. Both of these events, along with the Mexican fight for independence, are what influenced Orgoman to create this mural. However, the main reason why he created the mural was because of the dirty war and what was happening during the time. During the 60s and 70s, Mexico state of Guerrero had trouble dealing with their citizens, especially the lower class. And because of this, the state of Guerrero decided to use violence and extreme measures to control their citizens. The reason as to why the state felt the need to control their inhabitants is because during this time there were many political reform movements in Guerrero. You would expect the government to step in, but the pre rule government saw this as a way to control the competition, so they didn't do anything about it. As a result of the violence, guerrilla groups emerged in Mexico such as the Party of the Poor and the September 23rd Communist League. These groups were influenced by Marxism and played a key role in fighting the state, federal government, and the rich. The party of the poor kidnapped a prominent member of the PRI and tried to organize a revolution. The pre rule government immediately took action and tried to eliminate slash take out all of the guerrilla groups. Furthermore, the guerrilla groups were also backed by the students while the PRI was supported by the USA. The students played a major role. They protested against the government and fueled the guerrilla groups and others to join the rebellion. There were two major protests that fueled the rebellion against the government. The Corpus Christi Massacre and the Tlatelolco Massacre. In both of these protests, students were killed by elite Mexican forces hired by the government. As for the US, both Mexican presidents during this time were collaborating with the FBI and CIA. This is what is known as the Mexico's Dirty War. The pre rule government supported by the US against the guerrilla groups and left wing students. Today, it is widely known that the torture the Mexican government used on their people, the disappearances of thousands of protesters and naysayers, and the murder of the protesters as well. 
Let's now take a look at the mural, and for a second put all the history of the time and the events that occurred in the back of your head. In this mural you see a father someone in the middle holding a paper that is lit on fire, and a banner of the Virgen de Guadalupe above him. You also notice a group of men in the bottom right of the mural. These men seem to stand up because there's people gathered around them and that makes them seem important. On the other side, you also notice the poor people on the bottom left. Some of them are being tortured by an executioner and a soldier, and another one is crucified. Above these people, there seems to be an upper class. Other things to notice from the mural is that the right side of the mural seems lighter than the left side. There's also organic shapes all through the mural because of the people. Through the use of iconography, we notice some key figures that stand out. This one is probably the one that stands out the most. In this part of the mural, we see Padre Hidalgo. He was an essential part of the Mexican fight for independence. Many recognized him as the leader of the fight and gave him the title of General of Insurgents. If we think about Mexico's dirty war, you can imagine that there were multiple people like Padre Hidalgo. But the ones I believe are most like him are the students. The dirty war all began with the students protesting against the pre-government and because of this, civilians joined them even more when the massacre happened. Moreover, in this part of the mural we see a group of men gathered around each other looking over papers. These men were Carlos Maria de Bustamante, Jose Manuel de Herrera, Jose Maria Murgia y Gallardi, y Jose Maria Morelos y Pavón. These men held positions of power at one point or another in the federal government or states. Bustamante was a Mexican politician and historian who supported the Mexican fight for independence. Herrera was a general during the Mexican-American War and was president of Mexico three times. Murgia y Gallardi held multiple positions. He was a tax collector for the independence, a politician, and most importantly, he was one of the writers of the independence. As for Morelos y Pavón, he was probably the most important one of all. This is probably why he is the only one standing and with a sword amongst the group of men. Morelos y Pavón took over the fight for independence once Padre Hidalgo was executed. If we think about this in the context of Mexico's dirty war, these men would be like Arturo Gamis, who led the September 23rd Communist League, or like Lucio Cabanas, who led the party of the poor. Moving on in this part of the mural, we see a man who seems to be a soldier talking to an executioner and a native Mexican. While the executioner was torturing the native, the soldier tells the native, Sepan todos los habitantes de Nueva España que habéis nacido para callar y obedecer, no discutir ni opinar en los altos asuntos del gobierno. Which translates to let all the inhabitants of New Spain know that you were born to obey and listen, not to argue nor give your opinion on the high affairs of the government. This man's name was Virey Carlos Francisco de Croix. This relates to the dirty war because the soldier is just like the soldiers in the Mexican government and states hired slash ordered to kill, kidnap, and torture their citizens. This part of the mural is the one I find most interesting for the reason that Ogurman actually spoke about it. Ogurman said, Tal parece que los españoles trajeron a Cristo para crucificar al indio about this part of the mural, which roughly translates to it was seen that the Spanish brought Christ with them in order to crucify the native. This could mean many things and ideas of all Ogreman and the world. This could mean that Ogreman dislikes Christianity or that he only looks at it as a tool for controlling the populace. In addition, this also shows the power of religion and how people can become submissive to it. Because even after and during the fight of independence, the fighters and protesters still believed in God and carried Christian slash Catholic symbols with them. Going forward, this might be Ogurman's most well-known mural. It can be found at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. This mural shows four stages of Mexico. The pre-Hispanic era, the most ancient era, the Spanish colonial era, and the modern age. An interesting fact about this mural is that it was made using thousands of colored tiles. On the north wall of this mural, we see multiple mythical signs such as Quetzalcoatl, Tlaloc, and Tlatzelteotl. Quetzalcoatl was a deity who helped make mankind. Tlaloc was also a deity. He is the god of thunder, rain, and lightning and Tlatzetol is the goddess of purification. 
All of these symbols come from the Aztecs. Much like Ogurman's murals in Unam, the Epopoya del Pueblo Mexicano might be Rivera's version of the concept. In the Epopoya del Pueblo Mexicano, Rivera exhibits Mexico's story from the pre-Hispanic era to the modern age. Rivera's mural shows the savagery of the conqueror, the struggle of the Mexican people against invading nations, and the unfinished future being constructed. This part of Rivera's mural shows the early stages of Mexico, just like the north wall of Ogorman's mural in Unam. In both you can see the Aztec symbols and natives worshipping, building, and in general the Aztec culture. Moreover, on this part of the mural you can see the natives and others like Padre Hidalgo are getting ready to fight for independence. This part of Rivera's mural resembles Ogorman's Retablo de la Independencia. The Retablo de la Independencia was all about the fight for independence and how it relates to modern time. The retablo is like this part of Rivera's mural except it goes much deeper and has more to do with Mexico's history because it involves the dirty war, the revolution, and the fight for independence. Overall, I believe Alderman made this mural with the purpose to remind the Mexican people about how much they and the generation before them have sacrificed to get to where they are and to almost provoke them to stand up to the government in order to put a stop to all the injustices they have endured. This is my artwork. I made a collage of online pictures. In the Retablo de Independencia, Ogurman showed the Mexican people how history was repeating itself and tried to provoke them to stop it from repeating. This is my take on the concept. In this collage, I tried to show the different ways African Americans were controlled in the U.S. When the U.S. first started, there was slavery throughout the nation. This is what the whip in the bottom left represents. After the Civil War, the slavery was abolished by the 13th Amendment. However, it did not stop there. In the 1950s through 60s, there were multiple civil rights movements fighting for the rights of many minorities, such as Mexicans and African Americans. Policemen would brutalize minorities with batons, many white Americans would threaten African Americans with guns, and minorities were controlled through fear. This is what the gun, baton, and KKK sign represent. Today, there is a new way of controlling minorities that many of us are starting to see. Imprisonment. The incarceration rates are completely disproportionate and target men of color. One in every 15 African American men and one in every 36 Hispanic men are incarcerated in comparison to one in every 106 white men. Minorities also account for 60% of prisoners. This is what the prisoners walking and watch towers represent. Also, you may have noticed that there are prison bars men sitting down inside the city skyline. This also represents a new way of controlling minorities is through imprisonment. I hope this shows you how incarceration is a modern way of slavery and makes you want to put a stop to this abomination.